गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स गाड ब्लेस यू लेट अस अनकवर अनदर डेवल्स ट्रिक वेन ही ट्रिक अस टू बिलीव दैट आफ्टर एक्सेप्टिंग चीसस एस अवर लॉर्ड एंड सेवियर वी मे लूज अवर सालवेशन एंड एज आई हैव कैप आई हैव मैंशन सो मेनी टाइम्स दैट डेवल यूज इज द बाइबल ही नोज द स्क्रिप्चर्स फ्रॉम फ्रंट टू बैक एवरी थिंग एंड he is using particularly two verses one from old testament and one from the new testament uh, let me read them to you um uh, isaiah 63 1 uh, isaiah 63 sorry uh, 7 to 10 uh, and then ephesians 430 let me read to you starting with isaiah 63 i will tell of the kindness of the lord the deeds of which he is to be praised according to all the lord has done for us yes the many good things he has done for israel according to his compassion and many kindness he said surely they are many they are my people children who will be true to me and so he became their savior in all their distress he too was distressed and the angel of his presence saved uh, uh, presence saved him saved them in his love and mercy he redeemed them he lifted them up and carried them all the days of old yet they rebelled and grieved the holy spirit so he turned and became their enemy and he himself fought against them and then another ephesians 4:30 and do not grieve the holy spirit of god with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption so now uh, these are the two verses uh, ephesians 63 63:10 and uh, ephesians uh, sorry isaiah 63:10 and ephesians 4:30 what they will uh, tempts us to believe that if we do wrong if we sin if we fall short uh, as per god standard then uh, we have grieved the holy spirit and once we have grieved the holy spirit now the holy spirit will leave us he will not walk with us and then we lost god's favor this is not true as actually there are 30 references in entire bible related to grieve this particular word grieve however grieving the holy spirit in english translation has been used twice one in old testament old testament as a 6310 and one in ephesians 430 in a new testament only two times used and if you look at the you know that old testament was written in hebrew now in when you read in hebrew this is how it is written the verse 10 the half of the verse 10 we are they rebel against grieve his holy spirit how it is written in hebrew let me read to you Wahemma maru waisabu ruah kwadaso that means but the rebelled and mistreated spirit is holy there is no grieving there is no grieving however in hebrew there is something written there that is not translated in english what it is let me read again wahemma maru Waisabu, and there is Alefta, Ruah Kwadaso, and if you translate literally, it is but the rebelled and mistreated Alefta spirit is holy. So in this word in Old Testament, there is no word grieve. I don't know why it is translated in English. I am not scholar, but what is Alefta? That is not translated. Alefta is there in in uh, Hebrew Bible, but not in English translation, and certainly not in any other languages. So Alefta, if you remember, Jesus gives his introduction in Revelation. He says that I am Alpha and Omega. That is a first letter of Greek alphabet and the last letter of alphabet. In Hebrew, he is saying Alefta. I am Alefta. In, in uh, so Alef is the first letter of the uh, Hebrew alphabet, and the Ta is the last letter of the Hebrew al- alphabet. So Jesus in Revelation, basically, when he says that I am Alpha and Omega, that means Jesus is saying I am Alefta. Now you know that in every Hebrew letter, 
is a letter also it is a number and also every hebrew alphabet has a picture associated with it so you know that uh, the picture of aleph is ox head ox head is aleph and a picture of ta is cross so when jesus says that i am aleph ta that means jesus says that i am a to z you cannot try translate if somebody says i am a to z that means i am everything if you need healing i am your healing if you need a restoration i am your, your restoration if you need answer of prayer i am your answer of prayer if you need peace i am your peace aleph ta means a to z everything included in it also aleph ta is actually this is the picture and this is how aleph ta is written aleph ta this is the alphabet and if you take a picture aleph has ox head and ta has a cross now ox head if you remember ox head says shows the strength and you know that in old testament time they were offering ox as a sacrifice and in a new testament jesus christ was offered as a sin offering for you and me so when jesus say i am alefta that means he i am everything also he is saying that i am your salvation so in isaiah this alefta is written in hebrew but it is not translated in english it is not translated in any other language but there is no word grief there simply if you let it like literal translation it says that but the rebel and mistreated spirit his holy so he turned and became their enemy now this is another thing in old testament time they said that they turned against and whose enemy they became they became enemy of jesus christ basically and he himself fought against them so jesus christ basically it says that in isaiah 63 that when they turned against they when they grieved they mistreated that grief they mistreated jesus christ then he jesus christ turned against them and they and jesus christ fought against them that is a one thing but again old testament was a time of law law god did not wanted to give but people choose that I, we wanted a law before the law was given there was a time of grace and people abraham jacob they all did wrong things they lied multiple times but still god blessed them because it was time of grace when the law came very first day of law was given 3000 people died because they broke the first law thou shall not have any god against uh, in front of me so they were living in old testament time that do good get good do bad get bad and that is why in isaiah time jesus christ has not come yet and if you read from 7 8 and 9 it says that jesus christ says that i walk with them and basically jesus delivered them god walk with them he delivered them multiple times he showered them with grace and help every time they 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 cried out to god but they never turned back they never gave their whole heart and god and jesus says that that is why bible says that jesus alefta fought against them but in a new testament time when the uh, book of ephesians written jesus christ has already died and now the time of law has is over the time of there was a time of grace then the time of law and after jesus death the time of grace restored again so you and me are living under in a time of grace where god will not turn against us so if you if you if you read ephesians 4:30 again it says and do not grieve yes it says do not grieve why because in old testament time the holy spirit was not living on earth you remember the spirit of god was coming on samson and he was doing miracles the spirit of god was coming on david and he killed goliath spirit of god was coming and people were doing miraculous things and when the spirit of god left uh, samson he became so weak and when he prayed again the spirit of god came on him and he 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 when he died he died more people than he killed in his lifetime so bible is saying that in old testament time the holy spirit was coming on occasion on, on an as needed basis 
But when the Holy Spirit came in in book of Acts on a day of Pentecost, it came here and stayed with us because Jesus says that I am going, but I am sending a Holy Spirit to stay with you. He will guide you. So now the Holy Spirit living with us, and as as Holy Spirit living with us, we may we whenever we do uh, wrong things or we commit sin, it grieves. It is just like you love your children, but if your children makes wrong choices, make bad decisions, you will not stop loving them, but you will be grieved. You will be sad. In that sense, the Holy Spirit is living with us, living within us. He's sitting next to you right now. And then we, when we do things not right in God's eye, it grieves him, but doesn't mean that he is going to leave us. On a contrary, if you read Ephesians 4.30 carefully and do not grieve, the Holy Spirit of God. And this, they will never allow us to read going forward because with whom you were sealed, you were sealed, you will be sealed. No, you are sealed. No, you were sealed. You are already sealed for the day of redemption. You are already sealed by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has a secures your salvation. He has sealed your salvation for the day of redemption. There is no judgment against you. And that is why Bible says that do not grieve because now he is living with you. Does not mean that you will lose your salvation. So in Old Testament time, we read that Isaiah 63, that Jesus Christ, Alepta, was against people. In a New Testament time, what is it? You, everybody knows John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall have everlasting life. But nobody reads John 3, 17. What it says, For God did not send his Son, that God did not send Jesus Christ into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. So in Isaiah, when the Jesus Christ has not died, he was against the people. But in New Testament, when Jesus Christ come and died, God showed his plan that he has sent his son, not Jesus Christ, not to condemn, but to reconcile, to bring back to him. So, friends, there are 30 references of grieving, two references in English translation, one in Old Testament, one in New Testament time. New Testament and only one reference in Hebrew it's called Lapio that is grieving Ephesians 4.30 but that is also not about condemning or not about losing salvation it is reminding you that your salvation the Holy Spirit has sealed your salvation you are sealed by the Holy Spirit for the day of redemption you don't have to worry about it but since he is living with you you are, he is watching whenever you uh, something wrong and it grieves just like father grieves when their, parent, uh, their children does something wrong. Friends, Holy Spirit is not a force. He is a person. He is a person like you and me and like Jesus, not like you and me, but just like he, Jesus Christ. And he is a person and that is why he can be grieved. It is not a force. So when you read Bible, particularly Isaiah 63 or Ephesians 4.30, don't let devil tempt you that you have grieved the Holy Spirit and you have lost your salvation because the, the grieving in, in, in original Hebrew and Greek uh, language, the grieving part is only in Ephesians 4.30 and that is also not for the condemnation. It is to remind that this is the Holy Spirit. Look how good he has done for you. He has sealed you for the day of redemption. But you are not going to condemn again. Read John 3.17. 16 you know it. Read 3.17 again. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. Friends, God loves you and he wants to not condemn you. He wants to have a relationship with you. He does not want to fight against you, but he wants to bless you. Would you accept his invitation? If you have not, just open your heart and say, God, 
Jesus, forgive my sin. Make me your child and he will answer your prayer. God bless you and thank you.